Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II, World at War. Uh, this has been, what, the last three or four videos on my channel have been this game, which I know is well received, but my intent isn't to strictly focus on this game. I've just been a little bit busy uh, in the last couple of weeks. I had a family vacation to the Bahamas and then was in Florida for a friend's bachelor party. So frankly, a lot of what you've been seeing was recorded a little while ago. Uh, I'm recording this one fresh, but um, I just, I've been a little bit busy, so I've been trying to catch back up to things, and I've had a pretty good run here the last few turns, I think, in Strategic Command. It's kind of been uh, capturing my attention, if you will, so that's why we've been focusing on it. But we'll get to some other stuff. I'm still waiting on my next War in the Pacific turn from XTRG, and uh, once we get that, obviously, we'll take a look at that. And I also need to return to uh, We the Revolution uh, to see what the Trial of the King has in store for us. Uh, but that will be a time for another day. With that being said, we are into January of 1944. We're moving toward the spring and hopefully ultimate victory over the Russians. We have broken through on the north, I think, and are driving toward Perm, which is the final alternate capital for the Soviets, while also threatening the current capital for the Soviets at Kubizhev. So we've got a strong force on both fronts, and the Soviets are rapidly losing strength. They're down to 60 ground units uh, from somewhere over 80 just a few turns ago. They've been losing very heavy casualties. Uh, and we've started moving some artillery and other units into the place to help us bombard and really hamper the Soviets' ability to hold the city much longer. I'm hoping actually Kubizhev falls next turn, and maybe we start to invest Perm as well. Um, additionally, we have advanced into the south of Russia. We've taken the majority of the Caucasus. I imagine we'll wrap that theater up next turn with the seizure of Batum, which is cut off from supply and is uh, badly damaged. Uh, and I'm also hoping to begin the assault on Tehran, uh, and hopefully we can seize Iran for the Axis powers, uh, potentially then driving into Iraq and Jordan and, and Palestine and re-entering uh, the um, theater in uh, sort of from the from the Middle East, perhaps re-entering the uh, Middle Eastern theater, or if not, then uh, you know uh, redirecting our other forces to deal with Russia. Kind of not sure what these troops down here will do. We may have to move them north to deal with the Russian capital, or we may uh, elect to uh, continue the drive into the Middle East and maybe into the rear of British interests. Maybe we can drive through Afghanistan and head toward Delhi and see if we can knock India out of the war. Um, but with that being said, guys, that's the current situation. We've already done our turn, so now really it's on us waiting to see what the Allies do here. Uh, the Japanese just fought a major battle against the Americans in the Pacific Theater. Uh, they destroyed three American aircraft carriers and three American battleships, well, two battleships and one battle cruiser. So the American Navy is uh, taking a bit of a lick. You can see there our diplomats just gained uh, some influence in Syria. I don't know if it's enough to bring Syria to war or not, but a uh, pretty big swing toward the Axis. And we saw that Peru in uh, South America just joined the Allies, so another enemy to add to the list of uh, powers that uh, that we're fighting with. Okay, Syria prepares for war. So we're going to get Syria to join the Axis powers here uh, in this next turn, which is kind of good. Uh, meanwhile, we can see here that Russia is redeploying forces, and uh, America is trying to, it looks like, pull out some of their amphibious uh, forces. You can see there a destroyer just ran into us, so there does appear to be fog of war for the AI units. Um, so we destroyed that destroyer. It looked like one of the amphibious uh, landing craft was able to escape. We can see the British are pulling some of their armor in southern India back now that we've, uh, I think, really ravaged their supply situation. Someone was talking about how the British don't be, seem to be fighting well in Burma, and I think that's because we took Rangoon. So the uh, Burma theater surrendered behind them, and I think that hinders their logistics. Meanwhile, American destroyers are attacking our carriers near Dili. Uh, that's something to be mindful of. We've lost one aircraft carrier for the Japanese, but we have sunk three or four American carriers now, along with five-plus battleships. So the American Navy has really taken a blow. Uh, they're still very strong, though. I'm assuming a large majority of their strength is in the Mediterranean right now, uh, but uh, just something we need to be aware of, because in all these battles, while we haven't lost much in the way of carriers, three to one in terms of the ratio, uh, we have certainly lost some pretty strong uh, air units. We've lost a, a fair bit of our, uh, our, what do you call it, our um, 
our complements of our aircraft on the aircraft carriers, which will make them more vulnerable to Allied air counterattack should we run into it. Meanwhile, the Americans have begun their invasion of Italy and Sicily. They've actually taken Sicily, and you can see they're strategic bombing the north of Italy. Uh, but they also have ground units that have started the invasion of Italy. So we've kind of clogged the bottom of the peninsula with a lot of uh, troops to try and slow them down. Because if Rome does fall, Italy will be knocked out of the war. Uh, meanwhile, the Soviets still have a fair tactical air force here that's trying to hit our troops near Moscow. And uh, there's a few Soviet naval assets as well uh, in the uh, various theaters. Uh, you can see here some mechanized counterattacks occurring south of the city of Kubizhev. You can see actually uh, uh, some Italian troops there being the focus of some Soviet counterattacks and being driven back. Some mechanized attacks to the north of Moscow and some infantry attacks near the Stalingrad theater here against these Romanian troops of ours. Uh, troops are hanging in there so far, uh, but uh, losing pr some pretty heavy casualties there. Nonetheless, as long as the Soviets aren't gaining ground, uh, I think we're, you know, doing reasonably well. Uh, Soviets just attacked or moved toward Pishkov, which is interesting because now I can maybe cut them off uh, with those troops there. And American troops are attacking up the boot uh, the long way. I'm curious if the Americans will launch like an Anzio-type invasion further north. They haven't actually landed at Naples yet. They could cut off a large number of our troops in the south of Italy if they do that. They did follow sort of the scripting for the Sicily invasion, but I don't know if, there, if there's similar scripting or not uh, for the uh, invasion of uh, southern Italy, because remember there were landings uh, near uh, Sicily, and, or sorry, near um, near Naples, I believe, uh, in the Husky operations, uh, and then there was also the Anzio invasion later in, in an effort to flank and take Rome. So uh, I'm not sure if the Americans will do that or not. Uh, it'd be a pretty big risk with all the troops we have in place, but it wouldn't be too difficult to cut them off either. It's kind of a uh, I think uh, an interesting tactical decision that the Americans are going to have to make. Uh, or strategic decision, I suppose. Meanwhile, the Allies are very active in counterattacking pretty much all over the board in Russia, in uh, China, in uh, sort of South China with the Indian forces there. So it's a very active turn for the Allied armies. Bit of a mixed bag. We've lost some casualties, certainly, in some of these units. But we've also done a good job of inflicting some casualties on the enemy also. So uh, we'll have to see how this all plays out. Uh, looks like the British just landed and took Dili, which was a small Portuguese island uh, as part of the island of Timor. Uh, I'm assuming they just railed reinforcements into Novograd. Uh, so, yeah, they're reinforcing the Baltics. Uh, various reinforcements going around. American mechanized troops here in uh, Sicily. Pum it's interesting that Palermo is an alternate capital for the... Uh, Italians. I would imagine most of their alternate capitals are in the south. And I'm surprised that they didn't actually reinforce that Soviet tank unit. Huh. Interesting. Some very interesting movements. I should be able to finish that British army off in Denmark, but they did advance south, which at least in theory cuts off my armies in northern Denmark uh, from being able to get back to Germany, which if we can't destroy the Brits could be problematic, but we'll see. I should be able to finish them off. Since they move, they won't be able to reinforce, I, th I don't think. The Soviets have a lot of fucking headquarters units. Jeez. I'm hoping maybe the snow lifts and we can start bombing these Soviet troops and, and uh, whatever. But I guess we'll see. Some Soviet units. Allies liberate Portuguese Timor. Great. Syria is joining the Axis. All right. So what are we going to do with the Syrian army? The whole one unit of it. I don't even know what the Allies have in the Middle East right now. The Italians are still hanging on to the important parts of Libya, though, interestingly enough. Uh, we sank an American destroyer, turns damage from bombing. The 43rd Army suffers attrition damage. Allies liberate Portuguese Timor. Jo er, Syria joins the Axis. And some intelligence reports about American units. All right, the 13th German Army is ready to deploy. And I think... I don't know if I want to deploy them here. Where do I want to deploy them? I kind of... I hate the idea of continuing to reinforce the Russian theater. So I think we'll actually move them to border the... Um, apparently there's a potential partisan unit here. So we'll move them to Metz to border France. Uh, and then we'll move these guys south. 
Oh, they didn't destroy him yet. There we go. We got him. Got him! Alright, so we finished off the British there. Move them back to Copenhagen. And we'll pull those armies out next turn. Uh, meanwhile, you can see here the uh, Russian army at Novograd. That was probably a dumb move. Uh, what can we do here? Man, these Soviet troops in this uh, city here really don't want to die. These goddamn paratroopers. They're just fighting up a storm. Their morale's one, their supply is one, and yet they just won't die. Uh fucking Soviets. Alright, um... I really should have just left them where they were. Those troops are going to get cut off next turn. Uh, we're going to reinforce these guys who took casualties last turn under Soviet attack. These guys... Ah! I was hoping I could attack them. This uh, Soviet armored unit up here, interestingly enough, uh, is a candidate for being destroyed. But apparently not, because I can't finish the goddamn fuckers off. Alright, so we damaged this army unit and nearly destroyed this armored unit, but we couldn't finish it off. Uh, it looks like both Perm and Kubajev are open to bombing. I don't think... These guys are really heavily dug in. I don't think I can... Let's see, what's the dig in? They're entrenched level one. So we'll attack with infantry here. Um, let's see. We'll attack with armor there. Shit. Alright, the only other infantry unit I have that I can easily attack with is these paratroopers. We'll move these guys back, already attacked. Move these mechanized troops in. Doesn't look like any of these guys are... ...all that effective at attacking. Hmm. I'd rather... Uh, I don't know. Can we take Perm? Like, can we... It's entrenched level 3, so if I launch some bombers at it, what'll happen? Not much. If I move... Defensive artillery for artillery? Jesus. How is there defensive artillery for the artillery? Let's pull this guy back. I'd love to knock the artillery out of the equation. Um... Can we reinforce these guys? They have no reinforcement ability. These guys do. What do we want to do? We want to reinforce these guys because they're almost dead. <sighs> Alright, um... Well, there's no point to strategic bomb those guys, because they're already no longer entrenched. The perm troops will suffer some from being dropped out of their entrenchment level. My Stukas... 
aren't super effective either. I could strafe these guys, but apparently I'm going to lose some casualties to ground fire. I'm mainly trying to keep these guys off balance. Why can't they reinforce? Let's shift. And we'll reinforce these guys too. So I think the main attack will occur next turn because we'll have this artillery in place at Kubishev, or however you pronounce it. Uh, meanwhile... If we attack, do they lose any entrenchment? Yes, they do. Okay. Interesting. That was a pretty effective attack there, that turn against Kubishev. Um... We'll have infantry in place to go at these guys. Their entrenchment level's down to zero at both of these places. So, barring some surprise, devastating counterattack here next turn, we should be in, in good shape here. Uh, and I guess what I mean by surprise, I mean surprisingly effective. As long as there's no surprisingly effective counterattack, we should be okay here. We're going to move this guy back one. Um... These guys will move forward. So we'll have a more forward deployed headquarter unit. And I'm hoping we can knock Russia out of the war next turn. I don't want to attack here yet. The morale's low. I mean, they're already not at 100% uh, power-wise. So we'll just kind of leave this army as is. And we'll uh, hope that they lose some experience. But, well, these guys aren't even experienced. Nice. All right. All right. And they shouldn't do a massive redeploy of troops to Perm yet. Because we haven't taken Kubishev. So we'll try and simultaneously take both of these capitals. Alright, so that's good. <laughs> the situation in the other part of Russia, probably not so good. But that won't matter as much if we take their capitals, I don't think. Meanwhile, in the south... Hmm... All right, so we finished off that Soviet unit. And we took the last city in the Caucasus. Meanwhile, can we bomb these guys? Do we have the range? I'd rather reinforce, frankly. Also, it's raining in Tehran, so we can't bomb Tehran yet. So we might as, use this turn, might as well use this turn to reinforce our units there. And then we'll... Uh, Move on Tehran next turn with two armored units and two air units, assuming we've got the ability. We're going to reinforce this Italian unit here in the south. Reinforce these guys. Okay. Alright, that situation's good. We already dealt with up here. So Germany's angling to knock Russia out of the war in March, by the looks of it. Meanwhile, Argentina... Continuing to attack and... Oh, wow, they did some damage. Who would have expected? Although still, the garrison unit can't knock any of their entrenchments off, which is annoying. Um, so yeah, situation in Germany. Russia should hopefully die next turn. Uh, and that'll free up our reserves to swing west and deal with the eventual American invasion there. Meanwhile, yes, Jerusalem was unguarded. The Syrian army just took Jerusalem. <laughs> uh, the uh, irony of uh, Syria taking out uh, Palestine from the war. Um, so Palestine should surrender next turn to the Germans. Assuming Syria doesn't fall, that'll be nice. Uh, we might link up in Baghdad. It seems like the British have stripped some of their forces from the region, so that's good for us. Meanwhile, the Chinese theater is... still a little bit tricky by the looks of it. A lot of units that aren't, uh... ready. I'd like to reinforce these guys and get them all up to full strength if I can. Maybe a slight pause in uh, the 
the campaign up here. Why is there a partisan unit here? Alright, that deals with those two. We need some other garrison units. Japan really needs some garrison units. Can we purchase some more? Actually, better if they're not even Japanese units. If they're like... Well, maybe not. I don't know. I just don't think there's Japanese units that can start on the continent. Alright, so we just spent all of our money as Japan on a bunch of garrison units. So we'll try and bring those into the theater next turn. Trying to knock these partisans out. How are you not killing anybody? There you go. Alright, those partisans are dead. Uh, meanwhile... British Special Forces units taking some punishment here in Vietnam. I'd actually like to operate these guys somewhere. Where did we want them again? Uh, these guys are knocked out. It's probably right here, north of Su Chao. We're just going to move the one garrison unit here. That'll be cheap. Alright, so that'll deal with these partisans. These partisans are already dealt with. So, everything... Everything in the south here is dealt with. We could use something here to the west of Changsha. And then in Quichou. Quichou is okay because it's at the front right now. All right, so these guys are going to upgrade because they can, because nothing else is... Oh, no, we don't have money for that, so they won't. Okay, so that's going to do it for China, I think. I don't really want to go on the offensive here. Maybe just swapping some of these core units back. But even they can't do anything. So yeah, we'll stay the course there. Meanwhile, we'll try and take Mandalay. Let's see if we can knock Mandalay out. I think we're going to have to wait a turn on Mandalay. Yeah. Didn't quite knock out Mandalay, but almost. Meanwhile, back to the Pacific. Jesus, that's a lot of fucking destroyers. Um, what do the reports say? The American Navy is 30 units big still, so it's still pretty large. Most of these guys are in cloud cover. There. All right. So that carrier finished those guys off. Are these guys in storm? No, they're in calm. So we can go after them here. We only have three aircraft left on this carrier. Two now. This heavy cruiser didn't quite finish them. All right. Let's fall back to Kantarhari. Um... Alright, so destroyed another American destroyer there. Almost got one there. Got him! Alright. Contact! Alright, so there's a British carrier here. I don't think we'll be able to hit him. We can try. Yeah, so we can hit the port pretty hard. 
Uh, meanwhile, there also are still some amphibious ships over here that I kind of forgot about, to be honest. This is a ranger battalion. So we just knocked them out. Hmm... All right, let's see if we can hit him. Nope. God damn it, we're just losing casualties here. All right, so... We can't bomb them. Or them. Uh, all right, we're going to move some of these units back a little bit to ports just because we need uh, we need some reinforcements for our, our air wings. But we did just knock out some American cruiser or some American destroyers. So we destroyed, what, three units there? So they're down to 27 naval units. And again, remember, some of those are in the, uh, are in the, what do you call it? That region. Europe, that's it. Some of them are in Europe, so... Um, shit, I can't get these guys off. Ah! Alright. Um, so we've got one British carrier, the Indomitable. Well, it's kind of bottled up here near Darwin. Um... Kind of split my fleet a little bit. I put a sub and a battleship down here toward the south of Australia. Uh, we've destroyed multiple American ground units and uh, quite a few aircraft carriers and other units. Mm, honestly, is there any reason to have these? Well, Bangkok is the capital of Thailand, so we don't want them to land there unopposed. Uh, same reason we've got these guys in Tokyo. Can they hit from over here? No. Oh, cool. I didn't know I could do that. I can do recon with aircraft by flying them to nowhere, and then they just fly out and give you a recon. You can see the map kind of become exposed. Hmm. I wonder if you can only do that with maritime bombers? I'm not sure, but that's interesting. Can these guys do it? No. Oh, well, they don't have a strike, so that's why. So I can do that with that. Oh, that's kind of cool. Now, if only I had known that before. Anyway, good good to know. So we can do those recons. Sweet. That'll be useful in the future. All right, so Japan is pretty much done this turn. Uh, we'll move these guys south, actually. And partisans are still okay. Honestly, I feel like maybe I should have my air units in the north. Just to kind of help break through this new Chinese defensive position. I think that will be relevant. Hopefully the weather changes soon. Alright. Um, that moves the bulk of them. The guys who can move this turn. And they're all going to be at full strength. Or almost all of them. Uh, meanwhile, Italy is... Hanging on in Elagela. We already reinforced there, so they've got their 90 left. Uh, let's reinforce these guys. And these guys. We're going to upgrade this unit here because it's still stuck on entry level, if you will. Both these German units we pulled back so we could upgrade them. And so we did. Reinforce these guys. Nice. That was an effective attack there against those Russians. Mm. 
we'll wait. All right, so hopefully we finish the Russians off next turn. If not, then hopefully at the minimum by April. And uh, also same for Iran. It would be great to take Iran for the Axis. I imagine there's a fair bit of money there, but it looks like most of their oil is actually in British-controlled areas. Um, Germany still has 200 MPPs left. I'm going to reinforce some of these units. These guys already attacked. Don't forget to reinforce these Italians. These are the keys, the one holding Piskov. Um, all right. So... Alright, so I think that's going to do it for this turn. We'll move one bomber a little bit further north to kind of get it out of the clutches of the Soviets. Maybe we move this guy over here? I hate the idea of them jumping forward and trying to attack. But I like a little bit more flexibility around the city as well. No, we'll bomb if we've got good weather and then we'll move it after that. Alright, so Perm has been slightly weakened. Both these capitals no longer have any entrenchments, so hopefully a double a hammer blow will knock them out of the war. And maybe the Soviets will continue their counterattacks to the south and not actually deal with the real threat in the north. All right, so I think that's going to do it for our February turn. I don't think I've forgotten anything, but feel free to let me know in the chat, and then I can make sure I uh, continue uh, and catch that before my next video. Uh, with that being said, guys, I hope, again, you're continuing to enjoy the series. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.